How you doing there? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Ein Dalit, Daf Seventy Four of Masechet Yevamis. Oops, just kidding. Masechet Kedushin. Um. All right. Well, let's go fight her. Oof. Have this some some schwer sugis over here today. Oof. Uh, okay. Can I tell you Masechet Yevamis? Say their Noshim starts with Mesech Tiyavamis and ends with Mesech Tiyavamis. All right. We're going to start with a fine Gimel with Beis. We're going to start with a fine Gimel with Beis. Whatever. Hopefully everything's okay. We're going to start with a fine Gimel with Beis. About, I don't know, 10 lines from the bottom. Tone Rabbanu. You got it? Good. The rabbi is taught. Nemen is chaya lomar ze koin ve ze levi ze nosen ve ze mamzer. Okay. So... If you have a midwife and, and there were a few women who gave birth in the same, in the same place. And so the midwife is believed to say, okay, this, this one was born to the, you know, this child's a coin, this child's a levy, this one's a nos, and this one's a mom. So she's believed to know who's who, you know, and if she says, this is the coin. So that's the coin. When is this? As long as nobody's, uh, uh, protesting uh, 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 her, her claims. As long as, like, everything goes smoothly and she says, this one's this, that one's that, and everyone's like, okay, thank you. So then that's fine. But if somebody says, what are you talking about? This one's the coin, then already it gets messy. Avakara lea ira in an emenis. But if somebody protests, then she's no longer believed. Ira demai. Now tell me about this protest. Ilema ir erchad. If it's one person protesting, the Amr Yechanon in ir pachos mishnai, Rabbi Yechanon says, that in order for a protest, there's going to have to be at least two people, not one. So, hello, ir er, tre, rather. Okay, so two people uh, protest it. Two people show up and say, what? This isn't the coin. Okay, fine. Be by same. Alternatively, the olam emelach, ir er, chad. Alternatively, I'll say, no, it's just one person said, you know, I don't believe you. Vichi, omar, rabbi yechen, and ir, and ir, pachos, mi, shnaim. And when rabbi yechen says that a protest must be at least two people, um, hane, mile, echa, di, isa, Chazaka de Kashris. That's only if we can assume, right, there's a Chazaka that, you know, uh, about something already. And then in order to undo that Chazaka, you would need two people to protest. But if there's no Chazaka de Kashris, right, if we have no reason to assume that this is the coin in advance, so now she's just saying that it's the coin, well then one, one, one protester would be, would be, would be enough. Okay. A, a fellow, a, a pizzaiolo, a fellow who works at a pizza shop and he's selling pizzas. So he's believed to say, right? So Shimon, Shimon the pizzaiolo. So Shimon owns a pizza shop. You know what it's called? Shimon's Pizza. And, 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 uh, Taka, there was a Shimon's Pizza in Queens, I think. Uh, I have a friend, uh, Kevin Oaken. You guys know Kevin Oaken? Kevin Oak and Mamish loved Shimon's Pizza. I think it was called Shimon's Pizza. He posh it, loved Shimon's Pizza. And when my friend Ash Cohn got married, he gave Ash a pizza box for, from, 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 from Shimon's Pizza. As like, uh, I don't know if that was his gift. But uh, I remember Itaka, you know, he, he gave him, a, a, I guess for old time's sake, he, ga- he gave, him, gave him a pizza box from, from, from Shimon's Pizza. I, I think in Hillcrest maybe. That's where they were. They're all from Hillcrest in Queens. Um, so uh, Shimon's Pizza. So so Shimon is believed. So so Ruvain and Levi are both fighting over over the pizza. Ruvain and Levi are fighting over the pizza. Ruvain says it's my pizza. Sh- Levi says it's my pizza. So Shimon is believed to say, "Hey people, it's Ruvain's pizza." Okay. Shimon the pizza man. All right. So Shimon, the pizza man, is believed to say, I sold the pizza to Reuven. I didn't sell the pizza to Levi. That is, as long as Shimon hasn't yet given the pizza to anybody yet, it's still in his hands. But if he already gave the pizza, and Mama said, Shnaim Oichazim the pizza, that, that you have Reuven, and Levi, our mom is fighting Stark, a tug of war over a pizza pie. Uh, in that case, he's no longer, um, 
believe. But why don't we just say, well, easy peasy. Shimon, who'd you take money from? Just right? so, Shimon, did Ruven pay you or did Levi pay you? So, Lotzricha did not commit We accepted payment from both of them. Hmm. Interesting. He says, look, one of them paid me and, you know, I intended to be, I, I, you know, I, I, I sold him a pizza and I was intended to get paid, but one of them paid me against my will. And I can't remember which, you know, who's the one who paid me that I wanted to accept the payment from, i.e., who, who's the one, the rightful owner of the pizza pie. And who, I guess, forced payment upon me and, and, and isn't the rightful owner of the pizza pie, I cannot remember. Okay. Nemendayin, lo my laws is achisiv laws achiavti. A dayin is uh, a judge is believed to say that I, um, you know, that you know that uh, you know Ruven is innocent, Shimon is guilty. Right? He's believed to say these things. When is the sosha by the dinim omdim lefanav? That's so long as the litigants are 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 still in the presence of the court. Aval ein ba le dinim omdim lefanav. But if the litigants are not currently in front of the court, they already left. Eino, Eino Neamon, he is not believed to say, oh yeah, Reuven is innocent and Shimon is guilty. Venechze is Husa man nokit, but why should he have to be, tell anybody who's innocent and who's guilty? Why don't we just see who's got the document that, on which it says, you know, you win this case. Well, the document got torn up. But still, why do, why, why do we need the Dayan to go back and try to remember what the psak din was. Why don't we, why does not he just rejudge the case? I mean, you know, if we're saying that, you know, that, you know, if it's based on objective law, so why don't we just have another look at the case and figure out who was right and who was wrong? Why, why, why does he have to try to remember? Just go back to the facts. Bishu did the dainy well, it's talking about, um, something that was, you know, a, a, a judgment that was based on, um, um, Bishu did the dainy. What's Bishu did the dainy? Based on, um, it wasn't objective. It was more subjective. It was based on, uh, what's that, what, what, what would the, uh, a word be called? Like, based on, uh, his, uh, discretion. I guess it was a discretionary psak din. And therefore, you know, there isn't an ob- objective way to reverse engineer it and figure out who was innocent and who was guilty. It's possible, you know, because it required, um, uh, discretion. And it's, it, it is possible that if he read, reviewed the material, maybe you would end up thinking that Shimon was innocent. You can't, it's un, you know, there is an objective criteria to know who is innocent and who is guilty. Um, so, okay. So therefore, once they've left the court, he's no longer believed to say who's what. Um, Reb Nachman says, Reb Nachman, Shloshin, Nehman, al Ah, ooh, that was awesome. I basically circumvented a Babylon. That was pretty cool. Amr of Nachman says, of Nachman, Shloshin, Nehman, and al Three people are believed to say, which is a Bukhari. I guess maybe if they're like twins, for example. So, so there are three people who would be believed to say which one is the older one. Elu Hain. These are the three. Chaya, a uh, midwife, can say this, this one was born first. Aviv, the father. Vimo, the mother. Chaya, the altar. A midwife is believed immediately, right? So right after the baby is born, the midwife could say this one was the Bukhari. But not after that. Imo kol shiva, the mother, the first seven days before the bris. So the baby is with the mother that whole time. So the mother at that point is able, able to know which one was the bechor. Aviv l'olam. Then any time after that, from that point on, the father is believed to say which one is the bechor. Because the Tanis, we learn the Brisa, yakir. Right? Because it says, right? Kiesa bechor ben asnua yakir. So it says, yakirenu l'achem. He could, you know, Make him be known to others. I.e., he could, he could, he could say to other people, "This is my son, the the bechor." Mikanam Reb Yehuda, from here, Reb Yehuda says, "Neman Adam Lomar Zebni Bechor," that a fellow is believed to say, "This is my son, my firstborn son." Uchshem Shenemar Sheneman Lomar Zebni Bechor, Kach Neman Lomar Ze Ben Gushav Zo Ben Chalutza, and just like he's believed to say, "This is my firstborn son." He's also believed to say that this is my son who is a Ben Grusha or Ben Chalutza. Whereas the Chacham say he's not believed to say a Ben Grusha or Ben Chalutza. Abishol would call the Shtuki, which is when you know the mother is but not the father. Abishol would call him a Baduki. Shtuki Baduki. My Baduki, what's Baduki? 
If it's that, well, we interrogate the mother, right? Meaning we know who the mother is. We don't know who the father is. So we say, hey, tell me about the father. Um, the Omeris, and she says, look, I got pregnant from somebody kosher. My child is not a mamzer. My child is, is a kosher child. The kosher Navalti. So Nehemenes, she is believed. Kiman. So who's that like? Kreben Gamliel. So we're saying that that's like Rabban Gamliel from Masechta Ksubis. Tanin Echad Zimna. We already learned Rabban Gamliel's opinion in Masechta Ksubis. So why do I need Abba Shaul to reiterate that? The Tanan is we learned in Masechta Ksubis. Haisim Uberis if she was pregnant. Vamrula Mativo Shel Uberze. And they say, tell me about you know who's the father. Amrula, she says, Meish Ploni. So and so is the father. Vekoinu, he's Taka a coin. Good Shtarka father. And Gamliel and Rabbi Omer, Omer Nehemenes. And Gamliel and Rabbi Eliezer say she's believed. For Rabbi Shua Omer, Lomipia Anuchayin. Because Rabbi Shua says we don't live based on her word, based on what she says. We don't assume uh, that the uh, you know that that it's that 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 the, the pregnancy is from the person that she says it is. So we see that Rabbi Gamliel says that we do listen to her. So therefore, Abba Shaul is saying Baduki, meaning that we ask her, "Tell me about the father," and she says that. Um, and the father is kosher, and Abba Shaul says that we could believe her. Okay, that's basically the same thing as Rabbi Gamliel. Why do I need Abba Shaul to teach that over here in Mesechta Kiddushin as well? We already know from Rabbi Gamliel in Mesechta Ksubis. Rabbi Yudah and Rabbi Shmuel, Lachuk Rabbi Gamliel. Rabbi Yudah says in Rabbi Shmuel that the Lachuk is talking like Rabbi Gamliel. So, and for the Gemara, Chad Alach Sheh Ba, Chad Alach Sheh Bebita. So, one is to say that she is Kshera, right? Meaning, if I would only have Rabbi Gamliel, so I would know that she can testify about herself. Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Gamliel trusts her that when she says that, you know, she, she became pregnant from a coin, so she's basically saying that she's Kshera. She can now marry a coin if she wants. She's not a Chalal. And we need Abba Shaul to teach that not only is she trusted about herself, but even about the child, that the child is also not considered a Chalal, and the child can marry a coin as well. So I understand, according to the Mandam who says that, you know, according to the opinion who says that she's believed about herself, but she's not believed about her daughter. So then I need, therefore, so meaning Rabbi Gamliel is only talking about herself, but not about her daughter. So I need Rabbi Gamliel, I need Abba Shol to teach that she's even believed about the daughter. But if you say that when Rabbi Gamliel says that she's believed about herself, she's oichit, believed about the daughter, well then, Abba Shaul may also ask me, and then what's the chiddush of Abba Shaul? So, the Abba Shaul adif from Midrash Gamliel still, Abba Shaul is starker than Rabbi Gamliel. The me hasam, because if you only have Rabbi Gamliel, have him in a hasam to have kshir in etzla. I would say, okay, in the case of Rabbi Gamliel, we believe her because it's a situation, but that's a situation where most of the men that could have possibly gotten her pregnant were kshir to her. Avalecha, but where to have psul in etzla? Where most of the people would be puzzled to her, Ema Lo, I would say that in that case we wouldn't believe her. Right? Uh, I don't know, maybe if she was like in Arusa or something like that. And she says that she, that, that she became uh, pregnant from her, um, from, from her, you know, betrothed guy. So maybe in that case, since there's only one person to whom it would be a kosher baby, but everybody else would be a mamzer, so maybe then she wouldn't be believed. Uh, no, Abba Shaul is saying that even in that case, if she says that she became pregnant from somebody kosher, we believe her Amarovah, Halacha Abba Shaul. Rabbi says that the Halacha is like Abba Shaul. Fine. Um, okay. Ah, Babayon. Okay, friends. Friends, you ready? You ready for Masech Yivamis? Ready for Masech Yivamis? Maybe you want to pause the, maybe you want to pause, pause it for a second, take a little break, maybe drink a few shots of whiskey, whatever. Um, Masech Yivamis. Says the Mishnah. So anybody who's not allowed to marry into the congregation, they are allowed to marry amongst themselves. Okay, fine. The Gemara is going to explain what this is talking about. Rabbiuda Oser, Rabbiuda says it's forbidden. Rabbi Eliezer, Omer says Rabbi Eliezer, or let's say Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Lazar, Omer, Vadon be Vadon Mutter. So, like a, mom, a mamzer Vada is allowed to marry a mamzeris Vadois, but Vadon be Sveikon, Sveikon be Vadon, be Sveikon be Sveikon, but a, ma, a mamzer and a Sufik, the Gemara is about to say, the mission is about to say in a second, you know, for example, an Asufi, 
or let's say shtuki, because shtuki is more fun to say. So uh, a, a mamzer with a shtuki, v'sveikum bevadaon, or a shtuki with a mamzer, v'sveikum v'sveikum, or a shtuki with a shtuki, aser. So then uh, that is not allowed. Okay. Pele na sveikum shtuki asufi v'chusi, and uh, these are the 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 suffix um, shtuki asufi and kusi. All right. Fun stuff. Fuktem or kusimar? Kusim were like the people who um, uh, converted because they were scared of getting eaten, about eating, getting eaten by lions. So it's uh, we don't usually assume that they are of the highest caliber Jew. Alright, fine. Alright, Chav, are you ready? You ready from Sechta Yevamis? Mike, oh gosh, here we go. Oh, all right. Michael, I still love a call. Oh man. Okay. Who are the, uh, when we say anybody who is not allowed to marry into the congregation. So who are we talking about? Ile ma mamzeri nisine shtuki vasufi. Here we're talking about a mamzer. Nosin. Right? The people from Joshua who need to like vasar traegers and holtz carrier. Holtz schleppers and vasar traegers. Vinisine. That was the holtz schleppers and vasar traegers. Shtuki vasufi. Right? We know what shtuki and asufi are for now. Well, Hatana Leresha, but we already know that from the first Mishnah in Asar Yochsin. Mamzer and Isine Shtuki Vasufi. Mutarim Lovo Zaboze. Are allowed to marry each other. So, why would the Mishnah have to say it again? Visu and Morsa of Yehuda Oser, when it says that Rebuda says it's Oser. Ahey, what's he talking about? Ilemo Avadon Bisveikon. If we're saying that Rebuda is saying that a Mamzer is not allowed to marry a Shtuki. Homidiktani Sefer Balazer Omer. Vadon bevadon mutter vadon besveikon 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 oser, but since that that would be a Rebbelozer Rebbelozer's opinion. Rebbelozer says that a mamzer is not allowed to marry a shtuki. Bechlad Reb Yehuda lo svirle, which implies that that's not Reb Yehuda's opinion. Reb Yehuda is saying something else. So v'chitem Reb Yehuda oser a ger b'mamzeres, and if you say that Reb Yehuda is saying that a ger is not allowed to marry a mamzeres, we know that that's Reb Yehuda's opinion, right? Reb Yosi says a ger. Is allowed to marry a mamzeris. Rabbi Yehuda says a ger is not allowed to marry a mamzeris. Midi ger mamzeris katoni kol asurin lavo bikol katoni. But it, the mission is not talking about a ger marrying a mamzeris because a ger it says kol asurin lavo bakol a ger is allowed to marry into the congregation, right? Uh, 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 a fellow converts to Judaism can marry a Jewish woman. So, and, and if a, a ger or a gioris can marry a Jewish uh, fellow. So, so, kol asun lava bekal, katani, it's talking about the people who are also lava bekal, not a ger. So, Amr of Yehuda says, Rav Yehuda, hachi kamer, this is what it's saying. Kol asun lava bekal kehuna. Ho ho, bekal kehuna. Ho 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 ho. Ho ho. So somebody who's not allowed to marry into the priesthood. And that is including a ger. Right? A ger is not allowed to marry a priest, right? Because we used to write a gioris cannot marry a coin because uh, we're concerned that maybe um, she was mezane before uh, she converted. Um, so she cannot marry a coin. So it's talking about a ger. And we're saying, mutarim lavo zeboze, but a ger can marry a mamzeris, right? Because we're assuming that kalgerim lo ikre kol, and a mamzer can marry a ger. So achi kamer kol asurim lovo bikal kahuna. So whoever is not allowed to marry a kahuna, a coin, kilo a ger, umay ninu, who's that? Kioris pusa mi bashalu shonu v'yomechod. A gioris cannot marry a coin, kilo, no matter how old she is, even if she's less than, even if she converted when she was less than three, and she's not ruuya libia. And therefore, there was no chance that she was Mizana. Still, um, um, she cannot uh, uh, marry a coin, uh, and she is allowed to marry uh, any any Gioris could marry a mamzer in that in that whole scene. So my Ninu again, Gioris pchusim basholo shonim v'yomechod, a Gioris who's less than three years in a day udlo kribshim ben and it's not. Like Rabbi Shimon Yochai, Rabbi Shimon Yochai says that a gioris who's less than three in a year um, 
is allowed to marry a coin since she was, of course, not Mizana before, uh, you know, when, when she was not yet Jewish. Mutarm um, Lavo Zeboze, and we're saying that a gear can marry, a Gioris can marry a Mamzer. Why don't we say that, why are we Dafka saying that it is a Gioris who's less than three years old? Uh, and, and it's not like Reb Shimon Ben Yochai. Why don't we say that it's Dafka talking about a, ge- a Gioris who is three years old when she converted? And therefore it could be even according to Reb Shimon Ben Yochai. We say at that point she cannot marry a Koin. Im Kain, if that's the case, Mitzidach Tava, but then you have, then we'll ask, then it wouldn't make sense because Ela Taima Debas Shalo Shonim Yom Echod. So then that would mean that we're saying that if she's three and a day, so then she's not allowed to marry a coin. But if she was less than three and a day, Dimuteris Lava Bikal, Kahuna, that she would be allowed to marry a coin. If she was less, if she converted when she was less than three in a day, if we would be saying that she'd be allowed to marry a coin, well then Asura Lavo Zeboze, then that would mean that she's not allowed to marry a mamzer, right? Meaning, because the mission is saying anybody who's also lovo but kal kahuna is allowed to marry a mamzer. And if it would be like Rabbi Shimon, that only once she's three in a day, she's also to marry a coin, but less than three in a day, she's allowed to marry a coin. And then that would mean, right? If less than three in a day, she's allowed to marry a coin, then that would mean that less than three in a day, she's not allowed to marry a mamzer. But if she's converted less than three in a day, that according to Bishim ben Yochai, she would be allowed to marry into the kihuna. But at the same time, she would still be allowed to marry a mamzer because, after all, why is a ger allowed to marry a mamzer? Because kal gerim lo ikre kal. That's regardless of what age she converted. So therefore, regardless of the age that she converted, she would be allowed to marry a Mamzer, because we're assuming kal gerim lo ikre kal, and therefore she would be allowed to marry a mamzer regardless of the age, and therefore um, it would have to be that um, we're arguing on Reb Shem Ben Yochai and saying that a gioris who converts at any age um, is not allowed to marry a koin and is allowed to marry a um, a uh, mamzer. Okay. Now, frankly, Gemara uchlalu. So now, according to Rav Yehuda, so. The Mishnah is saying that anybody who's not allowed to marry a Koyin is allowed to marry each other, right? So whether it's a Mamzer, a Nosin, Shtuki, a Sufi, um, um, a Gioris. So they're not allowed to marry a Koyin. And they are allowed to marry each other. Uchlalu, is that a general rule? That anybody who is forbidden from marrying a Koyin, Mutarin, Lavo Zeboze, they're allowed to, you know, marry a mamzer. What about an amona the koin gadol? That's not allowed. Ugusha vachalala vizona or agusha chalala zona is not allowed to marry a koin. The asurim lavu bekal kuna they're not allowed to marry a koin. The asurim lavu zebaze yet an amona is not allowed to marry. But she's not allowed to marry a koin gadol. She's also not allowed to marry a mamzer. Agusha is not allowed to marry a mamzer. So why are you telling me that just because they cannot marry a koin? Why did, that doesn't necessarily mean that 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 that, that they can marry a mamzer. Visu and more so hamotor aser, and then is is the opposite inference also correct? Meaning, if you're saying that if they are forbidden to marry a koyin, they're allowed to marry a mamzer. Does that imply that if they're permitted to marry a koyin, then they're not allowed to marry a mamzer? But vary a ger. What about a ger? Shemutu be kohenes. A ger is allowed to marry a kohenes, right? We said a ger is allowed to marry a kohenes. A gyoris cannot marry a koyin, but a ger can marry a kohenis. Umutu be mamzeris, and a ger, of course, can also marry a mamzeris, if we say kal gerim lo ikri kol. Selam rav nosen bar roshai, rather says rav nosen bar roshai, ahochi kama kol she koyin, also lisa is bito. If a koyin would not be allowed to marry his daughter, so then he's allowed to marry a mamzeris. Umaninu, umaninu ger shin osu gyoris. If you have a ger who marries a gyoris, uchor beliazu ben Yaakov, and like Abelazim Yaakov says that if a ger marries a gioris, that daughter cannot marry a koin. So we're saying Davka in that case they are permitted um, lavo zeboze. 
Okay. So Mutar and Lava Zabaza they can also marry a um uh ma mamzeris. Uchlalu, is this a general rule? The Khosh Shekoyin also this says Bito that as long as a coin can marry her daughter as long as a coin cannot marry her daughter, Mutarm Lava Zabaza, they are permitted to marry a mamzer. Hari Khalal, what about a khalal shin also basi sural? A khalal who marries a basi sural. The coin also this abito that a coin is not allowed to marry the daughter. Vasurin Nami Lavo Zabaza. And a khalal cannot marry a mamzer. Lokashi Krib Dostar Bibuda. Well you can answer Krib Dostar Bibuda who says that Bnos Yisrael Mikvetare Lichalo. That basically, if a chol marries uh, Bas Yisrael, the child will be allowed to marry a coin. So there goes that argument that uh, she cannot marry a coin. Meaning, whatever we want to say that if she cannot marry a coin, then she can marry a a uh, then then you know the parents can marry a chol, but uh, they can marry a, a mamzer. Oh gosh! We, therefore, we ask, what about a chol and a uh, right, that their daughter cannot marry Kain, but also cannot marry Mamza. But we say the daughter can actually marry Kain, so it's not a kasha. Fine. But what about a chalal who marries a chalal? The Kain also leaves a bito that a Kain cannot marry the daughter, but also Nami loves a buzzer, but also cannot marry a Mamza. Visu, Hamutur also, does that imply that somebody who is allowed to marry a Kain is not allowed to marry Mamza? Very, Ger Shinosa Basi Surel. What about a ger, a convert who marries a Bas Yisrael? The coin mutter lisa bito, a coin is allowed to marry that daughter, mutar lovu zaboze, and yet a ger is still allowed to marry a mamzer or a mamzeris. El Omer of Nachman, Omer Abba by Avua, Hacha mamzer me achosu, mamzer me ishasi, shikha binai. Rather says, Rav Nachman by, uh, um, the name Rabbi by Avua, that, no, we're not talking about gerim over here. We're talking about different types of mamzers, meaning, according to the Tanakhama, whether, you know, you have a, 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 a mamzer is a mamzer from uh, a chiyuv kares, for example, if somebody sleeps with their sister, or whether it's a mamzer from a chiyuv misas bezdin, for example, if somebody sleeps with an ases ish. According to the Tanakhama, mamzer is a mamzer, and therefore they can marry, you know, a mamzer from Baskoyin is allowed to, ma- uh, a mamzer from a chiyuv kares is allowed to, mamzer, uh, allowed to marry a mamzer from uh, from from a chiyuv misa, and that's fine. Tanakama says, "I feel mamzer may achosu nami avi mamzer." So Tanakama says, "A mamzer, whether it's from a uh, karis, uh, whether it's from a chiyuv misas bezdin, is a mamzer. They can marry each other." Rabbi Yudah Savar, whereas Rabbi Yudah Oser, Rabbi Yudah says, "No, so from aishas ish avi mamzer, only a a a a mamzer from an aishas ish from a chiyuv misas bezdin would be a mamzer, but may achosu avi mamzer, but from a chiyuv karis." Would not be a mamzer, and therefore a mamzer from a chiyuv karis. I mean, somebody, a baby from a chiyuv karis, would not be allowed to marry a baby from a misas bezin, because that would be a non mamzer with a mamzer. My kamash Malan, but what's the chiddush over here? Tanita, we already have a mishnah that discusses this sugya. Why are we teaching the same machlokas in two places with two, with, with different uh, uh, tanoim? We already have a a, a, a mishnah in Yevomis. Ezu mamzer, what's considered a mamzer? Kol shu below yavo tiv rabbi kiva. Of course, rabbi kiva's opinion. Any love, it would make a mamzer. Shimon atimni omer, kol shechav and all of kares b'dei shamayim. Shimon atimni says no. Even even if it's uh, no no, it would have to dafka be a chiyuv kares. By lacha kedivarv and the lacha is like Shimon atimni. Rabbi shua omer kol shechav and all of misas bezdin. Rabbi shua says that it's a it's a, a mamzer if it's a chiyuv misas bezdin. So why you know why are we saying? Why are we suggesting that our Mishnah is this same machlokas about is a mamzer from even a chiyuv karis? That would be the Tanakama here, and that would also be Shimon Atimni in the other place. Or is it like uh, even for, is it, or is it Davka from Misos Bezin, which is what Rabbi Huda is saying over here, which is what Rabbi Yoshua is saying in Yavamis? Why are we basically having the same machlokas in two places with, with different Amoraim? Why don't we just kind of merge them together? Amoja. So Ella, Amorava rather says, Rava Geramoni Moavi. Ika benayu, the nafkamina is a ger amoni umo abi. That, right, when we say that somebody is not allowed to marry into the kohol, that's talking about a convert from Amon and Moab that are not allowed to marry into the kohol, ever. Vachikomakol, assume love of the kohol, umaniu, ger amoni umo abi, 
We term love of Bazet Zeboze, so these so uh in um Geramoni and Moavi are not allowed to marry into the Kohal, but they can marry amongst themselves. Uh Yahya Mai Rabuda Osir. But then why would Rabuda say that they're not allowed to why why was Rabuda say that it's also Hachi Kamid is what he's saying, Afal Pish Rabuda Osir Ger Bimamzeris, even though Rabbi Yehuda says that a ger is not allowed to marry a mamzeris, animile ger, that's dafka ger, durari lava bakal, because a ger is um, permitted to marry into the congregation, right? A ger can marry a Yisraelis or whatever. Av a ger amoni moavi, the ain wuri lava bakal, lo, but a ger amoni moavi was not allowed to marry into the call, so then they would be allowed to marry a um, mamzeris. All right, friends, that was the Afei Ayn Dal of Masech the Kiddushin, of Masech the Yuvamis, Kivamis. Hope you enjoy. Peace out.